tonight we're going to be picking Jody's brain all about essential oils. So I'm really excited because this is an area uh, I never have claimed to be much of an expert on. I'm more of a nutritional expert, but essential oils are something that I think um, medicinally have great value. I've seen them work tremendously well clinically uh, in a number of people for different things. And, and uh, my good friend Jody, who we met a few years ago at another event with, with other healthcare professionals, um, we connected and she's got a new book out and I wanted to share that with you because I thought, you know, we've all been going through COVID, right? And um, the brains are definitely something that we need to um, to detoxify at this point. There's there's a lot of animosity, a lot of anger, a lot of confusion, frustration, just to, just to start the emotional conversation. So welcome, Jody. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, uh, thank you for nice having show. me. Yeah. So, um, how did you get into essential oils? Tell me a little bit about, about your background and what landed you in that, in that arena. Yeah, I think necessity is the mother of invention. So I got into nutrition through my second child. You know, my first one was really easy. Just assumed I was a great mom. Had another one 22 months later who was not easy, was pretty nonstop, busy, active. And I kept thinking it was my parenting and trying every parenting book I could find. And then one day we were at a birthday party and he was being really well behaved and my friend complimented me. And then another mother passed out a snack. It was a Ritz cracker and he Jekyll hide it and took off. And once I kind of got him and pulled him back, she said, okay, my brother was on Ritalin his whole life and he was just allergic to weird foods. Like I'd never seen him kind of Jekyll hide like that. You should take him to a nutritionist. And I did, and our cue with him used to be look at my nose, and he couldn't look at our nose. And a day after we changed his diet, he could look at our nose. And I realized, wow, this is crazy. I've been banging my head against the wall for three years, and it's diet, I have to learn more. So I went back and got a degree in nutritional therapy and was trying to help other moms, you know, with a wiggly kid. So um, I live in Seattle and there was a practitioner here who was teaching this technique called muscle testing that I found very helpful because um, you could very quickly ascertain the root problem and the key remedy, even if uh, the child was all over the place. And that came in handy when um, my next rock bottom hit. My, my then husband, uh, I just thought he was really fun. After our first child was born, I realized he was bipolar and manic. Uh, I thought we stabilized him. Our second was born and he went in the other direction and was getting more depressed by the day. And um, it became clear that he might die on my watch. So we moved him to a residential treatment facility. And the moment I knew he was safe and it wasn't my job to keep him alive, it was like it was safe to collapse. And I did, and it wasn't particularly helpful because my kids were five and seven. I, you know, had a full-time job. I was now a full-time mom, single mom, and I could barely get out of bed. And I was trying everything I knew to get better uh, and nothing seemed to work. You know, I'd get up with the kids, make their breakfast, pack their lunch, drive them to school, come home, crawl back in bed and set the alarm for pickup. And it wasn't sustainable. But luckily, uh, I had a good friend who I had just helped with a fundraiser, and her gift to me was a big box of essential oils. There were about 50 oils. And I really didn't know from oils. I dabbled with herbs. I maybe used lavender in a bath, but that was about it. But she said, uh, you know, you've been so chronically stressed for so long, and high cortisol means high inflammation. I bet that your gut is such toast that nothing you're ingesting is actually getting absorbed or assimilated. You know, oils can go through the nose, they can go through transdermally, through the skin. Try this. And I thought, why not? You know, I've tried everything else. It can't hurt. And I used my little muscle testing skill and tested the box for um, my adrenals and figured out five oils that would help and got confused because I thought I would get one remedy. Uh, and so it occurred to me, oh, wait, they're liquid. I can combine them. So I was a total newbie, grabbed a shot glass from the kitchen, made my first blend, put it on my adrenals, on my low back, and felt like myself for the first time in a month and got more done in that day than I had probably in the entire preceding month and realized, okay, that worked. You know, I'm going to keep leaning in towards what works. So that night when I, um, it's not uncommon to be kind of high stress during the day and completely insomniac at night. So I made up another remedy. And I just kept making things up until I started to feel more like myself. 
And then my friends were asking, oh, what are you doing? We want to try it. So I'm like giving it to them thinking, you know, this is strange, but it seems to work. And when I finally felt enough like myself that I had the bandwidth to go online and research, I was uh, really surprised that no one was really looking at oils through the lens of balancing organ systems and regions of the brain and that the way they presented it, they made blending feel very complicated. So I was almost grateful that I hadn't started with research, which I normally do, because I would have felt unqualified and probably wouldn't have tried it. So that's really how I got started. And then um, much like so many of us that see kind of the benefit, oh, wow, when I, when I remove this food, it works. Oh, when I add this food in, it works. And then you start to reverse engineer. Why, why is that working? Like, it's so interesting that, you know, when I smell an oil, you know, when I'm feeling tired, it seems to give me more energy when I put oils on, you know, reflex points that help balance the nervous system, I feel better. So I kind of dug in and really tried to research it to explain why certain oils did certain things and why certain application points seem to be beneficial where others were less so. Awesome. So like so many practitioners I talk to, the, their, their passion really grows from a personal experience. And yeah. it usually is in a, is in an area where there's a lot of ridicule. I mean, I've talked to, <laughs> as you know, I mean, I, like I, I'm i yeah. not a doubter. I, I don't, I don't disbelieve that, that essential oils can be helpful, but I know, you know, scientifically you ask, you know, a hundred medical doctors and maybe one or two will tell you, uh, if there's any merit to it at all. The other, the other 98 will tell you there's no science when in fact, I know there is science because I've, I've, I've done some research, although I don't claim yeah. to be the expert. That's, your, that's your, why I wrote the book. Yeah, your book really laid out a lot of things very nicely. Um, Thank you. Was that was my through. goal. Yeah. Uh, and for those of you who, who are interested more in essential oils, make sure you you pick up a copy. Um, you can get actually, we've got a link up oh, in the good. stream for you already where you can grab a free chapter one. And then, you know, I would encourage you read that if you like it, go buy it. Go, go pick up a copy of the book itself because there's a lot of great a lot of great charts, a lot of the great diagrams, a lot of simple to understand. To me, it's one of the first essential oil books I've, I've looked at that were really built direct to consumer for, for understanding and ease of application. So you did a great job in that way. Thank you. Um, let's talk. Uh, so you got into it out of necessity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one of the, one of the things you talked about just in the, in the, in the first part of your book was this sense of smell being necessary as a survival mechanism. And I love that. I, I, I believe that to be true. This whole year with masks and everything else. I'm like, what are we really doing here? Talk about that survival mechanism and smell and olfaction and how important um, that is and how people should understand that. Yeah, it's interesting. Of your five senses, your sense of smell is the only one with direct access to the amygdala, which is kind of the safety gauge in the brain. All the other senses are routed through the thalamus first. And um, most people don't realize that olfactory cells, nose cells are actually brain cells. That is where the blood brain barrier, kind of the security system for the brain is the thinnest. It's where the capillaries, you know, that get into the bloodstream that then carry things through the body or the closest to the surface. You know, there's a reason that cocaine is inhaled through the nose and anesthesia is delivered through the nose. The ease of delivery and how efficiently it gets into the system kind of predicates how people use it. So when you smell something, you know, usually if you're going to ingest it, it has to go through the whole digestive cascade and then go through the liver and get into the bloodstream. And then it's distributed to the whole body into the brain if it can pass through the blood brain barrier, which um, really only allows super small fat soluble molecules through like essential fatty acids. We know they're great anti inflammatory brain food because they actually get into the brain oils. You know, the reason you can smell, like if you were to, you know, smell an oil in your kitchen, like olive oil, you could smell it if you held your bottle to the nose. But if you put it on the counter and walked across the kitchen, you would not smell it. Oils like essential oils, like peppermint, you can smell them across the room because the molecules are so small, they're called volatile, that they literally are carried in the air and throughout the environment. And that super small size, it's what allows them to actually get into the brain and access um, regions of the brain that really help with our safety gauge. Uh, one of my favorite pieces of research in the book, there is an, a Nobel Prize winner who's also from Seattle, my hometown, named Linda Buck. And they were looking at kind of 
the sense of smell, right? It keeps you alive because you can smell food and water. You can also smell predator odor so you can avoid the predator. So she was isolating specific olfactory receptors that pick up on predator odor. And then she took it one step further and looked at what would cancel out that kind of fear response that triggered by the predator odor. And it was the smell of roses. Like that whole adage, stop and smell the roses. There's a lot of value to that. Rose is um, one of the best oils for anyone that's going through any kind of really intense emotional experience, you know, anger, fear, sadness, grief. If you're feeling, you know, sometimes emotions can almost feel like a tsunami, a wave. Sorry, my dog. <laughs> my dog really wants to express this point. Um, but, but smelling rose, it just helps to kind of calm that intense emotional experience. Did that answer your question? It did. Yeah, absolutely. So if I wanted to be a predator, I would just douse myself in rose oil. <laughs> a stealth predator, yeah. A the wolf predator. in sheep's clothing. <laughs> rose smell the sheep's clothing, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So let's talk about, you, you know, one of the, you talk about a number of different concepts in the book and you go through kind of phases of healing. And I, I want right. you to really elaborate to the audience on phases of healing. And then as you do that too, I also want to get some information from you about specific oils for, for two things. And maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but one is I really want to people who are watching tonight to walk away with a sense of um, what can I do specifically? If, if I have an oil kit at home, what can I do that is going to help mitigate the stress of what's going on in the world right now? Yeah. And two, one of the concerns, a lot of people, keep coming back to me with is, Hey, my sense of smell is gone. Like I've, I got COVID, my sense of smell is gone. I'd like to get your take on essential oil therapy for the potential of helping re-engage smell. So yeah. Let's, and let's... I, I can speak to both of those. Um, so the, the whole principle of the book, it kind of, the, the first part really does get into the science. Like people who say like, Oh, oils, that's like witchcraft. That's what yoga moms, you know, they just diminish it. And what people don't realize is that, plants oils are the concentrated essence of plants and plants are the basis for most of the pharmaceutical drugs 50 percent of the pharmaceutical drugs that have been authorized in the last 30 years are derived from plants like white willow bark is kind of modified a little bit and that's aspirin valerian root is valium you know and there are constituents chemical constituents of the plants that have been shown to either have sedative effects or to support um, flavonoids and the healthy gut microbiome. So there's a lot of research that goes into it. But what was interesting to me, and you might find this as well, you know, I, I practiced for a long time. And while everyone is, is bio-individual, I started noticing patterns that people that were doing everything right, they were eating all the right food, you know, they were trying to um, exercise and get sunlight and have healthy relationships. There were always three things that seemed to be out of balance that even though they were doing everything right, they really um, weren't, these were kind of hard to scratch areas. And that was kind of sleep um, and modulating your nervous system, like making sure that you were not stuck in the stress gauge. And then also people were good at, at mobilizing toxins, like eating you know, a lot of green leafy vegetables and kind of starting the detox process, but their lymphatic system and their drainage pathways, it was kind of like the, the toxins were mobilized, but they weren't necessarily being shepherded out of the body. And so they were recirculating. And those were three areas that I noticed oils played a really powerful role. And I'll delve into uh, all of them. And then the other two are kind of energy and immune modulation. But I don't think I am not one of those people who think there's an oil for everything. You know, if you're having a heart attack, go to the ER. If you break your arm, oils can help with circulation and drainage. But you know, the bone will heal. Diet might even be more important than oils for that. Um, but I do think that there are certain issues, namely stress, sleep, drainage, energy, and immune modulation that oils play a really powerful role. So getting to your stress question, you know, we're all kind of um, in this anxious, isolated, weird state where we're not really, um, you know, we might be more anxious than we normally are. So the easiest low hanging fruit solution for that, um, anxiety, you know, different regions of the brain do different things. There's a whole branch of chiropractic called functional neurology that's looking at the different regions of the brain, the different hemispheres of the brain. And what they're really trying to do is bring balance to the brain, because when the brain is in balance, then it shows up as its best self, it functions well. 
So the right hemisphere is known as kind of the ruminating hemisphere. And it's really um, our forehead area, our frontal lobe that helps with executive function, with paying attention, with focus. And also when anxiety is present, it seems to be the right frontal lobe that is overactive. And so um, functional neurologist Titus Chu taught me that the easiest way to balance that out is to stimulate the left frontal lobe. And the fastest way to do that is to smell anything, any oil in your house. You can peel a citrus fruit like a tangerine and oils live in the peel of the three fruits, you know, and just smell three to five breaths. In smelling something through the left nostril, you're then stimulating the left forehead, you're balancing the two hemispheres and the panic attack, the test anxiety, you know, if you have an athlete in your house, the performance anxiety, it calms right down. So that is the easiest thing to remember, just smell something through your left nostril in those moments of anxiety. And it can be anything you already like. Um, the other thing that tends to go on is that, you know, our operating system for our body is called our autonomic nervous system. It controls all of our automatic functions, you know, things we don't think about, our heart rate, our breathing, um, being able to digest our food, being able to detoxify and eliminate waste, anti inflaming immune function. And it really, it's designed to keep us alive. So it has different speeds. If there is danger present, it shifts into the fight or flight speed, kind of the sympathetic branch of the nervous system. And resources are allocated towards survival. So for example, um, your breathing increases, so you can get more oxygen to fuel your ability to keep yourself alive. You know, uh, hormones like cortisol spike to increase your energy available. Blood is routed away from your digestion and your detoxification to your arms and your legs so you can run quickly. Your vision changes, you know, the pupils of your eye, the black part of your eye get really big like saucers so that you can take in more light and selectively choose things that will keep you alive. It actually shuts down your ability to take in um, a bunch of information and, you know, access your creativity because if you get too creative, you might die in that moment. But this, this stress response, it's not just that the tiger is chasing us down the street. It can be anticipatory stress, fear about your health, your finances, your relationship, what's going on in the world. So many of us are kind of stuck in this high gear survival state. And that means that all of the things that happen when we're not running from danger, like digesting our food, detoxifying, turning on our immune function, function anti-inflaming, you know, they, they aren't actually getting taken care of. So our body is prioritizing what should be a short term experience and kind of getting stuck in that gear. Now, if you think of it like a, like a gear shift, you can either be in the sympathetic branch, fight or flight, or the parasympathetic rest and digest. The longest nerve in the body that most people have never heard of, your vagus nerve, cranial nerve number 10, serves as that gear shift. And it starts at the back of the neck, splits and is most accessible kind of right behind the ear if you're listening and feel behind the ear that is your mastoid bone that is where the vagus nerve is the most accessible to the surface and actually the thickest it then winds through your throat your heart your lungs your um every organ of digestion and detoxification and anything you do to stimulate any organ that is touched by the vagus nerve helps to activate the parasympathetic response. This is one of the benefits of deep breathing, you know, or yoga, you're doing twists and turns, exercising activates the vagus nerve. There are, there are a bunch of ways that you can do it, but early on, I started my company in 2012, right around the time this New York neuroscientist named Kevin Tracy was playing with uh, surgically implanting a pacemaker-like device right behind the earlobe. And he was using that to electrically stimulate the vagus nerve where it's most accessible. And he was having great results, such great results, in fact, that the FDA authorized this for migraines, epilepsy, depression. And I thought, huh, stimulate, because I, I was playing with how do I activate the parasympathetic nervous system? And I kept thinking, oh, it's, it's relaxing, you know, like lavender, that's sedative, chamomile. And I kept checking it with my aura ring because, um, Heart rate variability is a really good measure of parasympathetic tone. And it wasn't, it, it, I kept not moving the needle. But when I saw that research, I thought, oh, wait a minute. So many oils are stimulatory. And by that, I mean, if you were to put a drop on your arm, it might turn red, 
it might feel hot. You know, if you do this, um, remember oil and water don't mix. So you don't want to put water on to dilute it. You would grab any oil in your kitchen, coconut oil, olive oil, and dilute with that. But the point being, I started playing with stimulatory oils. Like what can I put on this spot using this spot almost like um, an acupuncture point or a reflex point to kind of influence the vagus nerve and induce the parasympathetic response. And the best oil turned out to be clove. And it's really high in this chemical constituent, eugenol, that has a lot of um, powerful healing remedies. But, you know, oils and blends are science, right? Clove has slightly medium sized molecules. So it takes like 20 minutes to get through the skin into the area. Lime and citrus oils um, have very small molecules. So when you combine them like a blend, you get a super stimulatory oil that gets through the skin very quickly. And so just topically applying the blend of clove and lime, I call it parasympathetic in the book, it literally helps you gear shift. It would be like you're riding your bike, you know, suddenly you realize, oh, it's hard, I'm in high gear. You know, you downshift to low gear and suddenly it's easy again. You are feeling stressed, you're feeling overwhelmed, you, um, your heart is racing, you know, you're having kind of rapid metabolism. You're like, wait a minute, I am stuck in sympathetic. So how do I gear shift? You can topically apply oils, you can do box breathing. There are many things you can do. Um, Datis Karazian, who's a practitioner that I really admire, has been talking about this for decades. You know, He talks about, oh, you can gag yourself with a tongue depressor, you can splash your face with freezing water, you can gargle for 10 minutes. And I, I knew, you know, I knew you could do this. And I was telling people, almost no one, you know, compliance, like that doesn't sound fun. Why would I want that? Yeah you know, but oils, it's just a really nice hack. You can literally flip a bottle, put it behind your ear, put it behind your child's ear. And it's almost like shifting into, um, you know, the parasympathetic state is required for digestion. People can be eating the perfect diet. And if the blood isn't routed to their organs of digestion, they're not able to digest, absorb and assimilate things. They're not breaking down their proteins as well as they could be. And that suddenly turns on the immune system and causes other problems. So does that, do you have any questions or? No, I love that. I mean, okay. you know, one of the things we see in people with chronic illness is chronic stress, right? The chronic inflammatory process, you know, upregulates sympathetic, you know, nervous system and they get an imbalance and that imbalance, you know, food and diet certainly effectively help to change that gear. But some people are so stuck in that gear, right? They need additional modalities. And that's, I love that because that's a very good takeaway. So you, you said, you said using citrus, like lemon, lime, yeah. combined, combined with the clove because of the eugenol and the clove has yeah. a stimulatory effect to upregulate the, the vagus, the sympathetic. Yeah, and, and one note on, on citrus, um, if citrus is pressed and you like put it on your skin and go out on the sun, that might make you more likely to sunburn. But if it's steam distilled, meaning that um, you know they boil it and kind of it goes off that way, that does not have photosensitivity. So just, you know, if anyone's listening and they're like, oh, I'm going to do that at home, be sure to use like a distilled lime or a distilled lemon, not a pressed lemon or lime. Okay. Good, good tips. Yeah. So, so, so you're, you're saying then step one is activation of, of the parasympathetic, parasympathetic. nervous system to get a person yeah. away from fight and flight, to get a person into rest and digest, because that's where healing and nutrient mm -hmm. uptake and digestion occurs. So what's yeah. the next, what's the next step? And that, that is a very important step. Like that step alone can be super beneficial for a lot of people, especially, um, you know, the, you need to be in the parasympathetic response to kind of uh, eliminate. So at any constipation, like that's a big um, bottleneck to healing. So sometimes just applying um, the parasympathetic oil helps people all of a sudden their motility improves and they're having bowel movements and that opens up. The next step is sleep. I mean, it's really hard to heal if you're not sleeping for a number of reasons. Um, it's when the organs rest and repair, but it's also when the brain cleans house. You know, in also in 2012, they discovered uh, the glymphatic system, which is kind of a lymphatic system in the brain. And what they discovered is when you're awake, your brain obviously needs to be firing on all cylinders. When you're sleeping, it can shrink by as much as 60% and allow the lymphatic system and the glial cells, it's called glial empowered lymphatic system in the brain to literally wash through like a, a car wash and kind of clean out the metabolic waste 
and everything that's happening in the brain. And that's how you prevent all these neurodegenerative diseases because if you have waste in the brain, you know, your immune system responds to toxins, including your own metabolic waste, and it causes inflammation. And brain inflammation is really what lies at the root of so many of the symptoms, you know, memory issues, fatigue, focus, all of those things. So the more you can, you know, just like you brush your teeth every day, just preventative medicine, the more you can make sure that your brain is cleaning house every day through restful sleep, um, the, you know, the more likely you are to kind of stay your best self. So what are your, what are your favorite, you know, blend blends oils that, that help to kind of help restore sleep or get a per Let's just take, take, I know there's a ton of examples you could probably give me because there's a number of different various situations, but let's take the person who's just really, really stressed out, lies down at night, their mind is racing. They can't relax um, because their thoughts keep going back to that, that fight or flight mode. What, what would you use to help that person calm down and get to sleep better? That's a great question. I really think there are kind of four underlying reasons that impede sleep. So what you're talking about is um, your stress hormone cortisol has a uh, works in tandem with your sleep hormone melatonin. They kind of have um, an antagonistic relationship. Like when cortisol is high, it forces melatonin down. When cortisol goes down, it forces melatonin back up. So what you need to do is uh, it, the part of the brain that releases the sleep hormone melatonin is your pineal gland which responds to um, darkness. Now that's why the amber glasses and anything you can do to kind of modify artificial light helps the pineal gland naturally release melatonin. But you can also use a combination of oils, um, including pine, which you know they're finding uh, for all this viral shedding, pine is really good for it. Pine's great for the brain. But um, I, I call it my circadian rhythm blend. It includes pine and chamomile and lavender and a couple other oils. But this point, like right above, not on the ear, but the skin above the ear, the skin is really thin there. So it's really a great point to apply um, any kind of sleep aid. And it's also level with the eyes. So the pineal gland is right in the middle of the brain, level with the eyes. It's called the third eye, but it's in that location because it allows it to kind of take in all of the light. It also, because of that location, um, is not as protected by the blood brain barrier and blood flow through the pineal gland is only second to the kidneys. So all of these kind of environmental toxins like uh, glyphosate, aluminum, fluoride from the water can impact the pineal gland and help um, kind of compromise its ability to release melatonin. So the more oils are not, um, what, what I think oils really do is they help eliminate stagnation. You know, they are what help move uh, fluids in the plants and kind of um, unpack congestion and, and toxins, you know, almost like you would unravel a, a ball of yarn that has not. So oil is kind of applied, you know, I wouldn't put oil on your uh, forehead, on your face, especially if you're um, a tossy turny sleeper, it can get in your eyes, which is not a good plan, but you can apply it above the ears, top of the head, back of the head, just kind of all around the pineal gland to help um, unravel, you know, whatever is compromising your ability to release melatonin. Uh, lavender is, is, most people think of lavender. La lavender has a constituent called linenol, which is really good for, uh, it, it's sedative, it's relaxing, but it's it's interesting. It's, some, it's a little bit like Benadryl. You know, they say like, oh, that'll put you to sleep unless it doesn't and it makes you hyper. Lavender doesn't work for everyone. It sometimes makes people hyper. The way I find it works best is as part of an Epsom salt bath. So two cups of Epsom salt, one cup of baking soda, I've started playing with adding like a teaspoon of borax just because that helps to detoxify even more. And then I use the um, bathtub as a mixing bowl. So I add like two or three, you don't need a lot, drops of lavender and literally mix it into the salt in the bathtub before adding the hot water. Because remember oil and water don't mix. And if you mix it in before, it doesn't float on the top. And that seems to give kind of a full body relaxation experience. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So sleep was number two. Um, we talked about sympathetic versus parasympathetic activating, you know, the calming part of our nervous system, engaging with it. Um, what's number three on the list? Drainage. Most people, this, this is the biggest thing. So, you know, the brain is detoxifying, the lymphatic system is washing through, and then the exit route for all the toxins is the neck. The neck is the biggest bottleneck in the body. 
because if there's any congestion in the neck, then the toxins don't drain, they stay in the brain, they recirculate. So anything you can do, you know, including structural alignment, super important. Um, the lymphatic system flows down the neck, the vagus nerve, we can talk about some things that could make that a little toxic. And then the vascular system, you know, the neck is really what allows the good thing. It's like the oxygen, the blood sugar to get in. So oils like peppermint, um, gosh, sorry, black pepper, cypress, they all kind of help to dilate, to increase the area um, in the veins to allow more oxygen in. And anything you can do, um, you know, the lymph doesn't really move itself. This is why any kind of movement, rebounding, dry brushing is great. But a lot of times people who are chronically ill have congested lymph. So what happens is the toxins aren't draining, they sit too long, they can get uptaken into the nerves and cause a little bit of damage in the vagus nerve, which can you know, lead to a, um, a sickness response in the body. But um, my, my friend and colleague, Dr. Christine Schaffner was working with chronically ill patients and she knew the neck was compromised. So they actually took sonograms, you know, the photos that you use for ultrasounds of the neck, noticed the congestion and started playing with different topical applications and essential oils like frankincense, especially if you can kind of open um, the downstream passageways, applying, topically applying essential oils on the neck can help with drainage, can help clear up that bottleneck. You know, and the lymph doesn't flow equally. It flows 75% on the left side. So the other bottleneck points are kind of the clavicle, under the collarbone, under the armpit. You know, it's a hydraulic system. So if there's congestion downstream, even in the liver and the gallbladder, then things, you know, back up further up. So the more you can make sure that the garbage is actually shepherded out of the body, and leaves the body so it doesn't get reabsorbed and you know have to be processed by the liver again. The more you kind of alleviate, um, you know, you alleviate the bad, you optimize the good. So that's a, a really powerful thing that I think oils are especially good at is just helping with lymphatic movement. So frankincense is great. Um, the mints are great. Spearmint actually is better than peppermint. But any you know, castor oil is great. Just really focusing on making sure that your lymph is moving in a healthy way and garbage is leaving the body. Love it. Love it. Yeah, you got to get it out of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, parasympathetic, number one. I'm just being repetitive for our guests. Oh, no, you're good. Sleep two. Sleep drainage two. Drainage three. Okay. And then, and then energy. And, um, you know, your body, we are, are really wired to stay alive, right? So we have our... Um, autonomic nervous system with a sympathetic response. We have kind of our limbic system with our amygdala that responds to danger. And then we have the endocrine system, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And, um, you know, it, the hypothalamus is really the CEO. It's constantly measuring hormone levels in the blood and then signaling the pituitary to tell the other endocrine organs, the thyroid, the adrenals, the, the pancreas, the ovaries, the sex hormones to respond. And what happens is, um, you know, most people think of stress and energy and they think of the adrenals and they're not wrong. The adrenals do play a role in releasing cortisol, but upstream from that, the hypothalamus can almost get dysregulated, you know, like your phone can glitch. It's constantly re reading, you know, taking in information and then responding um, based on that information. And just like the game of telephone, if it's measuring things inaccurately, what can happen, it's supposed to be like a, a thermostat gauge, right? The hypothalamus tells the pituitary to tell the adrenals to release cortisol, sufficient cortisol levels are reached, the hypothalamus then shuts it off and production is halted. But if for some reason, the hypothalamus isn't getting great messages, you know, the adrenals continue to pump out cortisol when levels are sufficient. So anything you can do to rebalance the hypothalamus is really helpful both for the endocrine system and for your stress levels. So um, there's a great application point, like almost right here. It's, it's really interesting. You can find a lot of the reflux points because they're um, indents, they're divots a little bit, but right in the middle of the forehead. Um, and I actually give the whole recipe for the hypothalamus blend in the book, but it's just, it's, it's a nice reset. I'm really trying to help, you know, if someone says, um, you know, I want to lose weight, I'm thinking of maybe dieting or exercising. It's like, why not do both? 
you know, like, let's just help reboot your body from the inside out, making sure you're eating the right food, making sure you're exercising, and let's just layer on some oils to kind of return your system to balance. Excellent. Excellent. So let's move to number four. I've got a lot of questions coming in too. We're going to get to oh, good. Um, good. Four was yeah. energy. Five, Five is immune modulation. And this is really, I, I think, you know, your immune system is, it's supposed to kind of be like Goldilocks, right? Not too hot, not too cold, but often it, either you're stuck in sympathetic. And so that down regulates your immune system. And so like you never get a cold and then suddenly you have cancer or you shift into autoimmunity and you're reacting to everything. And one of the big triggers is just poor digestion, right? You know, your whole digestive cascade, starting with the mouth releasing saliva is controlled by your vagus nerve. So if your mouth isn't releasing saliva, you're not necessarily breaking down the proteins. And then if you're not releasing enough stomach acid, hydrochloric acid, you're not breaking down these proteins. So if these undigested proteins get to the gut, the immune system flags them as pathogens. You know, it doesn't actually absorb and assimilate them properly. And now you're turning on your immune system, your immune system's kind of reacting to everything and overreacting to everything. So the more we can get your immune system working with you, not against you, the easier it's going to be to heal. And this is where oils really shine. I mean, they're really known for being antimicrobial, antibacterial. Um, certain oils like thyme has a constituent named thymol and oregano, the hot oils, they're really good for almost gear shifting the system back into balance so that it's it's not too hot, not too cold, it's just right. You know, when the immune system is turned on, then it triggers inflammation. And so the more you can kind of modulate the immune system, the more you can unpack inflammation uh, along with diet, you know, obviously um, your whole digestive cascade really plays into that. But again, trying to hit it from all angles. So, in summary, let's go back through them one more time and then let's dive into some questions. So, so those of you in the audience, um, I've got a lot of questions already coming in, but if you've got questions for Jody, uh, specific essential oil questions, now's the time she's an expert and we'd love to get her, her take on them. Thank you. So just to run through again, it's balancing the nervous system so that you're able to gear shift into parasympathetic, making sure you're falling asleep and staying asleep, making sure that the um, garbage is leaving your body and not getting recirculated, making sure you have kind of the energy to heal and your endocrine system is in balance and then modulating your immune system. Love it. Love organized thought processes. That's kind of how <laughs> I drive. So I, I love that you did that. Well, let's, uh, I'm going to back up here and take some of these questions. Okay. Um, and let's just roll them out. So let's see here. Oh, I got a good comment. So Word Girl says, um, your voice sounds like Mary Steenburgen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I assume that that's good because, you know, for me, Mary Steenburgen's voice is really like calming. It's like a calming essential oil. Like her just, oh, it's just a great sweet. tone. Yeah. Well, she's she's in that new show about Zoe's playlist. I do love my Broadway musicals and she's married to Ted Danson. So I'll, I'll take that. Thank you. <laughs> So Stan's asking, can, COB, can COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, be treated through the vagus nerve? What would you recommend oil-wise? Yeah, that's a good one for, for vagus nerve stimulation. The other thing that we've been finding, um, cypress essential oil, seems to be really good for kind of um, – enhancing the lung barrier and you know reflux points i find like you you can obviously apply it over the lungs but i i like efficiency so um the clavicle points actually if, if you're listening right now if you just gently like use your two fingers and kind of rub a little bit on your clavicles and if that feels tender that's a good thing to to maybe rub and stimulate but cypress oil is a really good one for that and another good application point for that is um just the back of the neck awesome so let's see a question on a blend, a particular blend of oils that might address, and this is a big, this is a big one, a big mouthful, dental issues. Oh, and dental so issues. I, I, I know there's probably a lot of different dental issues running through your mind. Yeah. Right now, but, um, well, yeah. so, um, vagus nerve toxicity, it's kind of a phenomenon that a lot of people, a lot of practitioners have noticed. And there is a Tufts researcher, Michael Van Eckler, who calls it the vagus nerve infection hypothesis. I have several blogs on this on my website, but one of the things that happens is you have, you know, like amalgams or cavitations or 
just bacteria that drain along the jawline, like that's the exit route. And then they intersect the vagus nerve and can cause vagus nerve infection. So the parasympathetic blend behind the ear is a good choice to kind of clean up that congestion. But for actually in the mouth, I really like oil pulling. I have a recipe in the book where it's like, cook. you can take, um, people like sesame oil. I didn't think it tasted very good. Um, Katie, um, Katie Wells, Wellness Mama, had a really good recipe that she let me include where she uses coconut oil and peppermint. So it tastes kind of like a peppermint patty. And you just swish the oil in your mouth for 10 to 15 minutes. And you know, fat likes fat. So a lot of the pathogens are fat. It's almost like a magnet. It's pulling the pathogens out of the gums. And then you, you spit out the oil into a bottle. You don't spit it down the sink because it's pretty toxic. You don't swallow it because it's toxic. But um, my, my gums, uh, I, I used to be a bit of a horror movie when I would go to the dentist, lots of bleeding. And I started doing that and I don't have bleeding anymore. So that's, it's not necessarily just rubbing an oil on, it's using it with oil pulling and, you know, try that for a month and see if it helps. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Um, Sophia is asking about, um, essential oils to alleviate skin inflammation. Yeah, there's actually, if you go on Amazon, they have my anti-inflammatory recipe in there. It's a combination of like frankincense, dill, ginger, tarragon, a bunch of anti-inflammatory oils and putting that on the bottom of the feet before bed. I, I do have a teenager and she has a lot of friends who love that blend because it seems to really help with skin inflammation. Skin inflammation is often one of two things. It's, it's gut issues and dysbiosis and Cleaning up the gut can help with that, or it's drainage. So um, toxins ideally go from the cell to the lymph, to the blood, to the liver, to the gallbladder, to the gut, to the toilet. But if the liver or the gallbladder is congested, it gets pushed back into the blood, can't hang out in the blood. So it either gets pushed through the kidneys, so you might experience low back pain and frequent urination, or the skin, and you have any kind of skin eruption. So if you're looking for the root cause, either look at gut, start with maybe removing certain foods that might be likely to cause inflammation, Peter's a better source of that than I am, or look to kind of clean up your, um, you know, help with your drainage and detox. So Witty wants to know um, if you have a combination of oils that work best just for general anxiety. Um, I have a blend called Adrenal that I use for anxiety and I put it on my low back. Parasympathetic is my best friend for anxiety. And then again, smelling anything through the left nostril. And that could be, I mean, go to Whole Foods and just pick out whatever you like. A lot of people like the citrus blends. Um, neroli and bergamot are, are kind of well known for being good for anxiety. Those tend to be um, more expensive, you know, the Porsches. You can also get like tangerine or orange. That's more like Honda Acura, but they're just as good. Okay. Uh, several people are asking about essential oils. Um, Susan wants to know about uh, essential oils for goiter. We've got a couple of other questions coming out of just general thyroid health, right? So what do you think yeah. about that? So, you know, frankincense and myrrh are the ones that are kind of renowned for the thyroid, but um, I love Isabella Wentz. I think she's so like we've got some tech issues folks um jody's frozen on us hopefully we'll get her to come back in here uh and get some of these other questions answered uh in the meantime while we're waiting uh make sure if you want to learn more about essential oils uh and want more you know want more good information check out jody's book i'll i'll, I'll um, put that up we've got a link in the feed as well um, where you can get download chapter one of her book for free but uh, if you really want to dive into essential oils, it's a great book. I've got my copy and uh, I'm really finding it quite, yeah, quite nice, quite helpful in, in that regard. So but I, I, I apologize. That's never happened to me before. <laughs> That's okay. We got a backup here. So you, I think where we lost you, 
Uh, we were starting, you, you were talking about Isabella Wentz and, and, um, and that's where you kind of fell off. Yeah, I'm so sorry. So um, anything you can do, you know, she talks about how thyroid support is really. You got to love and hate technology all at the same time, folks. Um, that's just the nature of the beast, isn't it? Um, sometimes it works beautifully without flaw and sometimes it, it, uh, it, uh, it doesn't. So, um, and we're going to wait for, for charity to come back in. Hopefully she'll get back in here and she can, um, we can wrap up the rest of the questions that are coming in. But, uh, again, if you want a good deep dive into essential oils, that's simple to understand. I think there are a few comments about how, you know, how complex some of the books and some of the information out there on essential oils are. Um, it's a great book. I've, I've got my copy. I've done my reading on it. And so highly, highly recommend it. I've got a link up in the feed for you that you can go and download for free chapter one and check that out. And if you really like it and want to learn more about oils. And again, I'll encourage you to pick up Jody's book uh, as well. Uh, let's see if we can get her back in the room here. Okay, still kind of waiting. Um, okay, so looks like we might be out for the count uh, with tech issues tonight, folks. Thanks. Uh, Oh, here we go. Maybe not. Let's see. We'll try again. Third time's the charm. Did that cut out again? You're back. You're you're back. No, we 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 may, it must be Isabella. <laughs> she, yeah, yeah. So thanks for supporting the liver. And you can do that with oils, um, liver and gallbladder bed castor oil with either hilichrysum or white grapefruit for the liver and then for the gallbladder black cumin seed oil um roman chamomile is good just topically applying right side of the body under the breast i think that um is kind of magic for the thyroid you know frankincense and myrrh are great as well and then anything you can do to support the endocrine system is really helpful in the gut especially eliminating you know obviously if you have thyroid issues eliminate gluten and dairy so let's talk then next about um, seizure reduction. Do you have any experience or have you seen, you know, clients that have had seizure problems do well with certain oils? Right. So um, the parasympathetic blend, it's interesting. Uh, the vagus nerve implant that helps with epilepsy and seizures, you know, because the more you can kind of calm the vagus nerve and, and activate the parasympathetic response, that really seems to help. Um, I haven't, uh, you know, a couple of the clients that, that I've had that have used the parasympathetic have benefited from that. Some people also like frankincense. It kind of calms brain inflammation, so you can put it at the back of the head or behind the ears. Okay. Uh, Mary's asking about dry mouth, like a Sjogren's type scenario or dry mouth. Yeah, that's actually a, a parasympathetic symptom when you have dry mouth. So the more you can activate your vagus nerve, the more it kind of increases saliva. So more, more, so a lot of similarities here then. Yeah. Yeah. Do, what, do you, Stacy's asking about like neurological pain in the neck. So like maybe disc herniation impingement of a nerve. Do you, is there anything that you you find yeah, helpful I, there? I have a blend called um, nerve repair that helps with that. And, and that tends to be like um, holy basil and things like that. But, but honestly, if that, I mean, sometimes nothing replaces structural work. Um, the other thing that helps is any kind of circulation support. So I have a circulation blend that's like black pepper, peppermint, um, cypress. You know, what, what you're really trying to do, you want to increase blood flow, right? So that more oxygen gets there so that it helps. And you also want to increase lymph flow so that the good things can get in and the bad things can get out. But um, I, I would also encourage, uh, you know, make sure you see a chiropractor. Okay. 
Yeah, good advice. I I, I kind of have a partial good opinion about chiropractors, <laughs> mainly because I am one, right? Yeah. Okay. So th those were the big questions coming through. Um, tell our tell our audience where they can find more. I know if we put a link up to your to your chapter one for free, and is the, is the book available yet? I know. Did I get it? I think I may have got an early copy. Got released uh, March sixteenth, so it's available anywhere books are sold. Amazon Target, Barnes and Noble, local bookstore. Yeah, and if you know if they had any questions, they can email us at info at vibrant blue oils. We try to get back to people within 24 hours. Um, and my company is Vibrant Blue Oils, and I have, I have a ton of blogs. You know, it's, I'm sure like you, you know, the book was written and completed before COVID, and I just keep learning more. So I try to every time I learn something new, I try to share it. That's awesome. Love it. So the education piece is there. What what was the website again for the blog post? Oh, vibrantblueoils.com. Vibrantblueoils.com. So, um, okay. What we'll do then is we'll, um, you know, it, it, some of you may be having technical issues. It looks like tonight's the night of technical issues. Um, I'll make sure that um, that gets... That, that all gets uh, set up into the feed so that you guys have access to it. Um, and also if you're on my, if you're on my email newsletter, you know, check your email because we sent out, you know, special links for you to check that stuff out as well. But uh, thanks so much for tuning in. This was a special edition of pick Dr. Osborne's brain. I love, I love bringing on. Vibrant Blue Oil. Okay, so we're so actually Jody just came back in. So um pushing her back in. Yeah, so yeah. vibrantblueoils.com. So fourth time's a charm. So we're wrapping it up. Um, any last words of wisdom that you have to offer before we do wrap up today? I think just the one thing that's really gotten me through the last year, you know, we all have those days when um we're driving in traffic and someone cuts us off. And we don't really care. We're like, whatever, you know, maybe they're in a hurry. It's all good. And then another day, um, the same thing happens and we're really upset. And I think the only difference is our resilience in that moment. And so the more you can activate your vagus nerve, be it through deep breathing, through time in nature, through whatever works for you, the more you um, can really show up as, as your best self. Because there, there's so much that's happening right now that's kind of outside of our control. But what we can control is our response. And the more you access your parasympathetic nervous system, the more you can control your response and kind of um, show up as your best self. Love it. Love it. Two more quick comments came in. Um, one, Allison says that her sister has the book and she borrowed it and she really thought it was great. Thanks for, for sharing that, Allison. And then Jen is asking um, one last question. What about rosacea? Any oils that you found to be helpful for rosacea? You know, it's interesting. I had rosacea and for me it was liver related. You know how I mentioned that um, if the if the toxins are being backed up in the liver, they get pushed out through the skin. So, you know, frankincense is good. Bottom of the feet is the best application point, but also anything you can do to really enhance your detoxification support, your lymph, your liver, your gallbladder, that will really help your skin. All right. So folks, great questions again. Thanks for tuning in tonight um, for, for a, a special episode of Pick Dr. Osborne's Brain. That, Jody, thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing your knowledge and wisdom. I'm so sorry that this, like, a bit, uh, pretty bananas. I'm sorry for my tech. <laughs> it's okay. It happens. Tech happens, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for, for being on and, and uh, look forward to catching up with you again soon. Okay, thank you. Enjoy your night. Thank you. You too. Take care.